Hey C3 fam, welcome to C3 at home. It is Independence Day, so hopefully you're celebrating freedom with family and friends. Um, I know today is gonna be fantastic. We're right in the middle of our summer in the Psalms, or as some have said, for summer in the Palms. Uh, however you wanna say it, uh, I really enjoyed it. I know you're gonna enjoy it. Uh, so I wanna encourage you real quickly to lean in. Uh, to not just settle back and just kind of, well, I'll let them do their thing on the screen. I'd love for you to jump in as best you can, lean in as best you can, stand up for worship, pray when there's prayer time, open your Bible when, when they're preaching, all that good stuff. And I do want to let you know we got a special guest today. Aaron Snow from C3 North Atlanta is leading us in our Summer in the Psalms message today. So I'm really excited about that. So let's get ready to worship. Let me pray over you guys. Lord, I thank you for this amazing church. So thankful for this community. And we are thankful right now that we live in freedom. Uh, there, I know there are a lot of things that we got to sort out as a country, a lot of things to talk through, but I'm thankful that we can. I'm thankful that we can talk it through and walk it through. And so we are thankful for all those who have made this day a possibility. I pray that there is life today. I pray that we, as we dig into the Psalms, there is continual growth in us and that we, as we read the liturgy of the exiles, that we would remind ourselves that we are all pursuing the same thing, that heaven would come on earth, that the kingdom of God would be uh, present in our every day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's worship together. Chosen, not for 
Hey, good morning, C3 Fort Worth. It's Pastor Aaron here, and uh, I am so humbled and honored to be sharing and encouraging you this morning in your uh, Psalms for the Summer or our Summer of Psalms series. I wish I was there with you in person. If I was being honest with you, uh, I, I love that we can do this, but there's nothing like gathering together as the body of Christ. And uh, I, Katie and I so miss you. Uh, we can't wait to be with you again in person. But nonetheless, we get an opportunity to gather. And uh, let's not forsake or let's not uh, miss out on the incredible opportunity that is before us right now in this moment. This 4th of July weekend, as you're, I pray, hope Hopefully celebrating, resting, and spending time with those who matter most to you. Uh, we just want to tell you how incredibly proud of you we are, how much we love you. Uh, and we also want to just publicly shout out your pastors. You know, uh, Brandon and Meredith are absolutely our best friends. Uh, we uh, love them with all of our heart. We love their boys. They are like our nephews. Uh, I would do anything for them. Uh, and so I just want you to just be praying for your pastors. I want you to be just covering them and uh, lifting them up as they're resting this weekend. Uh, and just pray that God would continue to use them and speak through them uh, and encourage them with his incredible power, his spirit, and most importantly, with the peace that comes through from just rest. Uh, in his presence. So we love you. We love your pastors. We love Fort Worth. It is a city for Jesus. And I believe that the word that God has put on my heart for you this morning um, would help us to not only claim that, but stand boldly on that promise. So it's July 4th. We're celebrating, but there's no one greater to celebrate than the incredible King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So this morning, let's just take 30 seconds right now, wherever you are, maybe you're at home, maybe you're by the pool, maybe you're at the beach, maybe you're sleeping in, wherever you are. Let's just take, take 30 seconds to just give our God praise and just thank him for all the wonderful things he's done in our life, his power, his might, his strength and his courage. Come on, how good is it just to give God thanks? I pray that you're clapping, you're shouting, you're thanking him for your miracle, you're thanking him for his blessings, you're thanking him for the incredible favor that you've experienced in your life. You're thanking him for the air you breathe. Right now, you're thanking him for the bed you got to sleep in this last night. Father, whatever it is, we pray that we thank you for it. We honor you and we glorify you because you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be celebrated. You are the incredible King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hey, so I want to share with you out of Psalm 48. Psalm 48, and I'm going to read to you in its entirety, and then I believe that the Lord has shown me four things in this particular psalm that I pray would encourage you and would help you discover and to uncover and to more importantly stand boldly uh, in a word that I believe is for you and for your church and for your community right now in this season. So turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Psalm 48, Psalm 48, and I'm going to read to you out of the New Living Translation. And it says this, how great is the Lord, how deserving of praise in the city of our God, which sits on his holy mountain. It is high and magnificent. The whole earth rejoices to see it. Mount Zion, the holy mountain is the city of the great king. God himself is in Jerusalem's towers, revealing himself as its Defender. Verse 4 The king of the earth joined forces and advanced against the city, but when they saw it, they were stunned, they were terrified, and they ran away. They opened, uh, they were gripped with terror and withered in pain like a woman in labor. You destroyed them like the mighty ships of Tarshish, shattered by a powerful east wind. We had heard of the city's glory, but now we have seen it ourselves. The city of the Lord of heaven's armies, it is the city of our God. He will make it safe forever. Verse 9, O God, we meditate on your unfailing love as we worship in your temple. As, you, as your name deserves, O God, you will be praised to the ends of the earth. Your strong right hand is filled with 
victory. Let the people on Mount Zion rejoice. Let all the towns of Judah be glad because of your justice. In verse 12, last section, go inspect the city of Jerusalem. Walk around and count the many towers. Take note of the fortified walls and tour all the citadels that you may describe them to future generations. For that is what God is like. He is our God forever and ever. And he will guide us until we die. I've titled this message, and I believe that this is a prophetic word for you and for your church in this season, that you are God's special city. You are God's special city. You individually, but you collectively as the body of Christ, as C3 Fort Worth, are God's special city city. And I want to break down this psalm into four parts. I believe that the Lord has shown me specifically four things that we can draw from this psalm specifically that would help us to not only to claim, but to stand boldly as God's special city. Come on, somebody say, I am God's special city. Now say, we are God's special city city. Okay. Part one, verses one through three, the Lord, I want to just, I want to summarize it with a statement. Okay. So verses one through three in Psalms 48, the Lord, the King resides in Zion. The first three verses of our Psalm today help us to identify and to recognize and to know that the Lord, the King the king, the only king, resides in Zion. I want to help you understand just a a, a little bit of theology here around the word Zion or specifically Mount Zion as it's referenced in scripture. In the first covenant or the Old Testament, Mount Zion was Jerusalem, a dwelling place for the presence of God. It was a place where the Israelites came to worship the Lord. Okay, so that's the, that's the first covenant. That is the Old Testament definition or description of Mount Zion. It was a dwelling place for the presence of God, a place where the Israelites came to worship the Lord. Okay, but when we look at Mount Zion in the New Testament or what some might also submit as the second covenant, what we find is that Jesus instructs his disciples to wait to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, we learned that in, uh, at the, in the beginning of Acts, uh, in the Gospel of Luke as well. And as we receive that power, we are filled and empowered to go be carriers of His presence to all the earth. Essentially, what we become, you and I, is a living, breathing, walking, and talking Zion. So in a first covenant, the Old Testament, Mount Zion was a place. In the, the second covenant, the New Testament, Mount Zion becomes a people. Psalms, 120, uh, excuse me, Psalms 132 and 13 says this, For the Lord has chosen Zion as, his des- as he has desired it for his dwelling place. Okay, So the Lord has chosen Zion at, he has desired it for his dwelling place. Verse 14 says, This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. We could basically summarize this particular scripture to say this The Lord has chosen Zion, He has desired it for his dwelling place. In other words, He has chosen Zion as his dwelling place to be his forever home. Be following along. So in the first covenant, it was a place. In the second covenant, in the Old Testament, it was a place. In the New Testament, it was a people. And the Lord has chosen Zion to be his dwelling place. He has chosen it to be his forever home. Let me just break this down for you just a little bit further, okay? You see, when the Lord, what the Lord showed me is particularly about Zion is this, is that Zion in Hebrew and Greek are the words Sion, which means a mountain in Jerusalem. We identified it. It's a place. 
but its origin actually is from a word siya, which means dryness or drought. And so what we find is that the Lord chose a place, but more specifically, the origin of that place was a dry or dr a place in drought. And so when we look at what the Apostle Paul teaches the church in Ephesus in uh, chapter 3 and 16 through 18, he says this, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he would empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. My prayer for you, C3 Fort Worth, and my prayer for the church is that much like Paul did in his letter to the church in Ephesus, that you would be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, that your dry and desolate, heart, desolate hearts would be filled to overflowing so much that, you, that it would cause your roots to grow down so deep into God's love and that you will be so strong that nothing, listen, nothing will cause you to waver, question, or doubt your purpose in your city. You see, the identity of Zion being a place and then its origin word being identified as a dry or a place in drought, if we are then in the New Testament to be that very people that carry the presence of God, to be the new Zion, but yet some of us are doubting, are in seasons of dryness or might be in a, seasons of, a season of drought, I pray that by the power of this word, the Holy Spirit would rest upon you, would fall on you, would fill you afresh so that you would never doubt your purpose, your position, or your authority in the city that God has given you. That is, that, uh, that as you and I, excuse me, invite the Lord to reside in our hearts, as we invite the Lord to fill our lives, as we invite the Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts, that we would stand boldly and confidently as what? God's special city. Let no season, let no circumstance, let no situation dry you out to the point where you would waver, question, or doubt your position, your authority, or your place in your city because you, C3 Fort Worth, are called to be God's special city. Part number two, verses four through eight, summarizing those scriptures with this statement. The king, excuse me, or the king's lowercase k, of the earth thwarted from attacking her. The kings of the earth were thwarted from attacking her, her being Zion. In other words, the kings of the earth were frustrated. They were neutralized from attacking her. What we see in scripture regularly and read in scripture is where earthly kings would assemble a plan and, uh, and, and set out to pursuit, in pursuit to assault Jerusalem, Zion. There was constantly throughout scripture, these attempts, these plans, these strategies to, to, to assault and to defeat Jerusalem. Yet time and time again, we see that those plans or threats were thwarted. They were neutralized. They were defeated by the powerful, unmatched presence of God. Which then makes me wonder, as the living version of Zion here on earth today, I wonder what kings are currently assembling to attack you and I. What earthly kings, what earthly things are currently planning, scheming, drawing up strategies on how to attack us, to try to take us out, and to cause us to forfeit our position in the city that God has placed us in. I wondered, is, is, the, is the king, the earthly king, a thought? Is it a fear? Is it a family member? Is it a sickness? Is it uh, the, the, the aftermath of the pandemic? Is it a tormenting thought? Is it, is, what is it? Is it, is it a mental thing? Is it, is it an emotional thing? Is it a physical thing that, that, that the enemy's using as a plan, is scheming and conniving against 
the, 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 against Zion, against you and I, against the body of Christ, to try to remove us, to disqualify us, to cause us to question or doubt our purpose, our position, or our place in the city in which God's called us. You see, much like the plans of every enemy where, where they were thwarted, where they were neutralized or defeated, I believe, I believe that if the Lord resides in our hearts, if, if He in fact dwells in our hearts, and we have been filled with the Holy Spirit, then whatever kind of worldly king that is planning right now an assault on you, that today, right here in this moment, right now, by the power of my word, you can rest assured that those plans are being thwarted. Those plans are being frustrated. Those plans are being neutralized. They are being defeated in this very moment by His power, by the unmatched presence and power of our Father in heaven. Why? Because my Bible says that no weapon, that no scheme, that no plan, no attack of the enemy can be or will be fashioned or forged against us. Because we are sons and daughters of the living God and because we are sons and daughters of the living God, that makes us sons and daughters of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I love what the Apostle Paul uh, encourages the, the church in Corinth in 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. He says, do you not know that you are God's temple? Do you not know that you are God's temple? Did you not know that you are Zion? Did you not know that you are the house of the Lord? Did you not know that you are the resting place? Did you not know that you are God's forever home and God's spirit dwells in you? So let me ask you again, what earthly king is trying to attack or assault the king's temple? I'm declaring that those plans are being thwarted right now by the power of the Holy Spirit and that you would stand victorious, that you would, re that you would stand in your place and you would take your position confidently and boldly as God's special city. Part three. Verses 9 through 11. Let me summarize those passages of Scripture with this statement. The Lord's presence brings joy to His people. The Lord's presence brings joy to His people. Psalms 16, Psalm 16 and 11 says this, You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. I love that. I love that you will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. Psalms 48 and 9 say, Oh God, we meditate. In other words, we ponder, we reflect, we think on your unfailing love. This is specifically now in our text for today, Psalm 48 and 9. We, we meditate, we ponder, we reflect, we think on your unfailing love. Your, that, that unfailing love can be defined as your goodness, your kindness, your mercy, your righteousness. And as we worship in your temple, as your name deserves, O oh God, you will be praised. In other words, you will be glorified, you will be honored, you will be celebrated to the ends of the earth. And your strong hand, right hand is filled with victory. When we ponder or meditate on his love, for us. We pause and we just think and we meditate and we reflect on His love for us. It's then when we are reminded of what He has done for us. Remember at the beginning, we, we celebrated Him. What has He done for you? What's the grace you've experienced? What's the forgiveness you've experienced? What's the healing you've experienced? What's the miracle you've experienced? We be, when we ponder, when we meditate on His love, we, we then are reminded of what He has done for us. That becomes our witness. And when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, it's when our praise, our confession reaches the ends of the earth. It's when we ponder and remember what He's done for us 
when we when we meditate on those things and we're reminded of that which he's done for us it's then it then leads us to a shout of praise to a place of praise to a pray, place of confession and it's then that our praise and our confession has the power to reach the ends of the earth why because if each of us would just meditate and ponder on what he's done for us and then begin to thank him for it and praise him for it, imagine the people we might reach with just our praise You see, I believe that some of you and some of us particularly have been so consumed by the attacks of the enemy. So consumed with the plans of the enemy, the, the earthly kings that have been plotting and scheming and conniving against you. You've been so consumed with it. You've been so gripped in fear by it that you have forgotten you are a son or daughter of God. And that he has defeated the plans of the enemy. You, you, it's almost as if you forgot that he prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And I share that with you because I know that there's been seasons in my life where I have, where I have forgotten the good things that God has done for me. Where I've been so consumed and so distracted by the schemes, the plans, and the, 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 the attacks of the enemy that I've forgotten that he's defeated the enemy. And I've forgotten that he has prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I believe that there's been times where we have forgotten, and some of us might be in that season right now, we've forgotten the power of our praise. I know I have. And so I wondered, maybe for some of us, when was the last time that we meditated on His unfailing love for you? Nothing else. Not what can you do for Him, or what does He need to do for you, but more specifically, just His, 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 His unfailing, never-ending love for you. Or when was the last time you meditated on what He has done for you? Maybe it's the house you're in. It was a miracle home that once upon a time was all that you prayed and believed God would provide. And now it's just become a home. What if it's your spouse? What if it's your children? What if it's your leg that you got miraculously healed but you just forgot because you've been so distracted by the plans of the enemies that you forgot of the wonderful things that God has done for you? When was the last time you meditated on the things He's done for you? And when was the last time you stopped to praise Him for it? You see, I, I think it's, it, what, what we find is that when we stop to meditate on His unfailing love, on what He's done for us, and we praise Him for it, it's our praise that reaches beyond our natural ability and goes to the ends of our street, it goes to the ends of our neighborhoods, it goes to the ends of our cities, which then in turn goes to the ends of the earth, and glorifies and gives God all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. You see, I believe that it's our praise that brings joy to our hearts and reminds us of His unfailing love for us. It's our praise that reminds us that we are God's special city. It's in our praise. So I want to challenge you to, to stop and meditate on His love, unfailing love for you. Meditate on that which He's done for you. And then praise Him for it because it's our praise that reminds us that we are God's special city. Part four, last part. Stay with me here. Verses 12 through 14. Let me summarize it with this statement. Zion endures to tell the next generation. Zion endures to tell the next generation. When we stop and we look around our city, what do we see? Stop right now, look around your city, what do you see? You know what I see? I see a fortified city. A city that cannot be shaken. A city on a hill lighting the way for today, tomorrow, and the generation to come. This is not a natural defense. Let me let, make no mistake about it. This is not a natural defense. This is a city that has been battle tested. This is a city that has grown spiritually mature and has developed a spiritual defense that can withstand the trials. And it can withstand the challenges to ensure that the next generation hears of the wonderful works of God. 
Come on, you are God's special city. And no matter what the world, no matter what king of the world, no matter what circumstance or situation or pressure is trying to convince you to think otherwise, you have to understand that everything that God has seen you through, every miracle you've experienced, every financial breakthrough, every open door, every closed door has been a season of preparation where God has been preparing you. He's been testing you and he's been preparing you so that on the other side of this moment, you can come out of it the other side saying we've been battle tested. We've been matured spiritually and emotionally and we can stand boldly and declare that we are God's special city and we are here to proclaim the wonderful things of our God to ensure that the next generation and the generation after that and the generation after that hears of the wonderful things of God and more specifically, they know that they have a purpose and an assignment in our city even well after we are gone long gone they will pick up the mantle and they will run with boldness and and courage like never before because they witnessed a people who stood and proclaimed we are God's special city this is our time and our hour and no weapon formed against us won't prosper no plan of the enemy will take us out no scheme no 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 enemy no anything will cause the plans and the purposes of God to be confessed to be praised and to be glorified and more specifically to be shared with anyone who will listen. There's a, there's a part of me that just sensed that right now that most of us and maybe even just a handful of us, we're not focused on the future generation because we're so detra- distracted by the present pressures of today. We've let the pressures of the moment, the pressures of the day, the pressures of the season distract us completely from focusing on ensuring that we're continuing to lead into a season where the next generation will hear of the wonderful works of God. We are being bombarded daily with temptations and expectations and pressures and standards of our world that, that the enemy is using to win the war on our temples. And I believe that the reason why the enemy is getting a foothold is because we have not properly set the foundation. And I believe the reason why that foundation has not been properly set is much like what we find in the book of Acts in, ver- in chapter 19, when Paul says to this group of Corinthian disciples, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? When you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to Did you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? To which they answered, we've never even heard of the Holy Spirit. I believe that some of us may have asked for forgiveness. Some of us have received forgiveness of our sins. And maybe even we've been healed of our sickness. We might have even gone as far as being baptized in water and made new. But but somewhere along the way, we never received the completed work of the cross. And we never received the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'll pray, I want to pray right now, specifically that that you would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That you would leave here today with a certainty of knowing not only are you chosen, are you called, and are you loved, but that you have an assignment to stand boldly and to confidently stand as God's special city. I, I want to pray right now specifically, if that's you, just stop whatever you're doing. Would you just do me a favor? Would you just lift your palms to heaven and just prepare your heart and just allow yourself to be fully devoted and fully committed to this moment. And I'm, I'm going to pray right now that right where you are, there's a lot of examples of the Bible saying that, it's, uh, that there's an element of laying on a hands that receives, but I believe that the Holy Spirit can do what He wants when He wants, no matter what the circumstances are. So I'm going to pray and believe that just our obedience to just lift our hands, our palms to heaven, that we would receive an outpouring of the Holy Spirit right now where you are. So Father God, right now I pray you pour out your Spirit afresh on every person here. Those of us who have never experienced the Holy Spirit, those of us who have never even heard of the Holy Spirit, and maybe some of us who just need a ref- to just be renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray right now specifically for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit. That every hand, every palm raised towards you, lifted towards you, would experience right now a breath of fresh air. That there would be a peace, a calmness that would come over them. There would be a sense of joy and hope that would come over them. 
There would be a sense of courage and boldness that would come over them. There would be healing right now in Jesus' name. Father, whatever it is that they need, I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would provide it for them. And that they would leave here today changed forevermore. C3 Fort Worth, you are God's special city. Say that with me. We are God's special city. And I want to just challenge you because I know what's going to happen. The enemy's going to do everything he can to try to distract you and discourage you even before this day is out. But I want you to hold true to that. And I want you to stand confidently and claim that word for you, for your family, but more specifically for your city and for your church. We are God's special city. And I want to encourage you not to let the worldly king pressure or standards tell you differently. I want you to walk out of here confident that you are son and daughter of the King of Kings. And I believe that you and I are the hope of the world. And I believe that the way that the world, the way that the next generation, the way that our neighbors, the way that our co-workers hears of the wonderful things of God is when we boldly declare and we step up and we stand out and we recognize that God has positioned us and He's purposed us for a time like this to be His special people. No longer do we have to go to a place to experience the presence of God, but we can carry it with us. And where the presence of God goes, darkness is defeated, light is illuminated, and people's hearts are softened to hear of the wonderful things of God. So I want to encourage you, go share with somebody that which God has done in your life. Spend time meditating on the wonderful things He's done, His unfailing love for you, and praise Him for it, and see if He doesn't use that as a testimony of His goodness to influence, to impact, and to open the door for somebody to know His grace, His truth, and His love. I love you, C3 Fort Worth. I'm so proud of you. Uh, I'm thankful for this time with you. I cannot wait to see you, and I just want you to know this. You are loved, your pastors are loved, and even Scott is loved. That's just a special little token from my boy Scott. I do love him with all my heart. I really can't wait to be with you. We cannot wait to see you soon, but go celebrate, enjoy your weekend, and most importantly, get some rest, spend time with the Lord, and celebrate with your family because you deserve it. Amen. We'll see you really soon. Take care. So good. So good. So good. Hey, can't wait to see you next weekend. But for today, enjoy your day, enjoy your weekend, enjoy Independence Day. If you're a guest with us, just happened to cross it or a friend told you to watch, uh, we'd love to connect with you. So you can do that very easily. Uh, one, there's probably a link in the description. Uh, but two, you can go to c3fortworth.com forward slash hub, H-U-B, hub. Uh, and you can click on new guest. Let us know you're here. Uh, if you want anything relating to Summer in the Psalms, you can do the same thing, c3fortworth.com forward slash hub, and you can click that link, find a reading plan and all of those things. And again, if you are a giver or part of our church and you call this home, uh, you, are, you are such a generous church and watching what God is doing in our community through uh, all of our sacrifices and all of our generosity, it's, it's been just an incredible thing. But again, you can go to c3fortworth.com forward slash give, or Hub, the link's there too. Uh, we love you guys. Have an incredible week. Talk to you soon.